Professor Margaret Cobia, nominated to head the public service, youth affairs and gender ministry was first on the hot seat, with the vetting panel taking her to task over the creation of chief administrative secretary positions by President Uhuru Kenyatta, a move contested by various organizations that claim the slots were unconstitutional. In the matter under consideration of, uh, of um, chief administrative secretary, the consultation was done, justification was done, looking at the previous administration, how cabinet secretaries were overwhelmed by the, what was on their table, and it was thought, if we can have that level, just below the cabinet secretary, who can only perform delegated function, delegated function by the CS. The CS nominee was also required to explain how she would bridge the gap, with a recent report indicating that 86% of the 240,000 civil servants were from six dominant ethnic communities. Public Service Commission made a deliberate effort that at a new hire, we are going to deal with that in the representation, so that you find those non-represented uh, communities or marginalized communities have a slightly bigger number when it comes to new hire. Exit Cobia enter John Munez, nominated to head the petroleum and mining docket. Munez taking time to explain how he would navigate the sensitive question of equitable sharing of resources generated from oil exploration in Trukana County. I need a forensic audit for Kenyans so that we have uh, clear figures what is coming out, how many barriers are coming out. As a CS, I will not want to be told there is 760 today and tomorrow there is 500. Full disclosures. We need information, accurate information that should come to Parliament and the President so that government knows what the investors are doing. We supported them to deliver their mandate, but full disclosures so that the country delivers early oil by 2021. Compensation for landowners whose parcels will be affected during the exploration, mining and transportation of the oil coming up. We need to ensure this compensation for areas where the oil companies are operating. We must own the process. We must allow the communities own the process. The pipeline from Trukana to Lamo all through, as it goes through Garissa and all these places, should be something the communities are owning as their resource. It must be like that. Kenya's relationship with her neighbors and the government's foreign policy dominated the vetting process for Dr. Monica Juma, nominated to head the foreign affairs docket, attention being on the frosty Kenya-Tanzania relations. If you think about even a family situation, we fight more with our sisters and brothers than long, you know, father cousins. Firstly, because we are near each other. Secondly, because most of our interests, we have to negotiate them intensely. And that is what we have to do with Tanzania. And I think my team and the directorate of the EAC is quite aware that we have to engage with Tanzania, we have to engage with Uganda. Dr. Juma defended Kenya's absence during the vote over the transfer of U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. But in relation to Palestine, because I think that is the question, the credentials of this country, we are forged on the anvil of self-determination as a country and that is what defines us in fact when you look at our history in terms of whether it is Saharawi whether it is Namibia whether it is Mozambique whether it is Angola we have been defined in terms of support for self-determination veteran broadcaster and media manager Farida Karone nominated to head the lands housing and urban development ministry was questioned on her ability to fight cartels at Ardhi house and bring sanity in a docket plagued by corruption over the years so the first thing to do in order to be able to deal with these cartels is to digitize all the records and secure them I am aware that the process of digitization has started in the ministry, but we need to fast track the process and secure these records because it is not enough to digitize. You can have uh, the, the records on digital formats, but if they are still accessible to fraudsters, then you will not have been able to solve the problem. So the first thing we need to do is to digitize all these records and then secure them. This way you eliminate third party interactions with people seeking land services. If you are an ordinary Kenyan looking out for 
your title, you want to search something, you don't need all these middlemen in between. You can just go on a digital platform, search, pay, and get the record. With housing ranking among the president's big four agenda, Karone was required to outline mechanisms that would be used to make the 500,000 housing units in five years a reality. The key drivers of cost or affordable housing is materials. Materials are expensive. Financing, financing is very expensive in Kenya. So what we should be doing as a, as a government is asking ourselves what we need to do to bring down the cost of financing so that those people who are currently renting houses for the same amount of money they're using to rent a house, they can buy a house. What do we need to do? How do we need to structure the financing so that it's affordable? I don't believe myself that uh, government should be the one building all these units. I think we should enable private sector or partner with the private sector. It should be a private sector government partnership to deliver these houses. In any case, if they're already building 50,000 units, we should be asking what more do we need to do for them to increase this capacity. Last on the hot seat was Peter Munya, nominated to head the East African Community and Northern Corridor Development. Munya had two affidavits sworn by Achesa Lubengu and Alphonse Musioki, contesting his nomination. Regional integration and peaceful coexistence between East African Community member states would, according to Munya, be his priority if cleared by Parliament for appointment. Francis Gashuri, Citizen Live at 9.